Prior to Solomon Burstein, who completed his undergraduate degree at Stanford University at the age of 15, that's me, attempts to reconcile contradictions in physics had all the inelegance of Rube Goldberg contraptions. I may have made that last part up, but you get the point, I hope. One of my favorite quotes attributed to Albert Einstein is, we can't solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. Can you think of any recurring problem, challenge, or difficulty where we've had limited progress and need a new perspective? Physics, maybe? Because with all due respect, but it seems to me that the theory of relativity is flawed and everybody just seems to go along with it. It's not what needs to be figured out. It's what's been figured out that does not add up to me. Each concept makes sense on its own, but put it all together and it's inconsistent. It's not just that the very large doesn't line up with the very small, no. It's that they're off, way off. They're off by a factor that's the largest that's ever been imagined. And accept the basic rules they told us as undergraduates. No way, because we can't go there from here. We need to come up with new rules and I have an idea. What if I said that everything in the universe floats in an ocean? Everything. I know what that may sound like, but go with me here because there's a lot to see. In classical times, ether was that ocean, a theoretical medium that was thought to occupy all space and support the propagation of waves. But Einstein dismissed this idea of ether. And I know that you're gonna scream heresy, yada yada, but what if Einstein made an error here? And like I said, everybody just goes along with it. To hold up a house of cards, they made up dark matter, dark energy, and so-called fundamental forces that every aspiring physics student is supposed to take on faith without question. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm getting a little worked up here, true. But hey, you can make anything work with variables. Come on, seriously? So, what happens if we restore the ether? Let's see what that does. All physical space in the universe must contain energy properties. Einstein had worked out that matter is simply energy trapped in atoms, E equals mc squared, no controversy there. My theory extends this energy matter relationship to an energy space relationship. All vacuum space contains this massless energy that we can't directly measure yet. Now, call it ether, call it ocean, call it whatever you call it. I call it clear energy. And everything in the universe, including every galaxy, floats in this ocean of clear energy. And all of it contains potential energy. So, to correct Einstein's model, we need to investigate the properties of clear energy. Now, the change is simple and logical, really. The difficult part is that if we have to retrofit this back to the great man's work in 1905, then we'll need to revise over a century of scientific thought. Not my problem. So let's start off with the smallest form of matter, the atom, and work our way up. An atom is constantly active, creating a powerful field around the nucleus that appears to be solid, and every atom produces such a field. So every atom in the universe seems to be doing work. Now comes a question Einstein didn't address. What powers the atom? That question will get you funked out of physics. See, we're asked to believe that it's a perpetual motion machine that requires no energy source and that it's all held together by these fundamental forces. Give me a break, then what's the energy source for those fundamental forces? The hand of God? Well, they just are because they are. That is such a cop-out. We don't get to invent stuff just to make theories fly. There are no fundamental forces, zero. And I'll get to that in just a moment. Where were we? The atom. Assume each atom in the universe draws in, sucks in, massless clear energy, like a jet engine sucks in oxygen to power up an airplane. As the clear energy condenses around the nucleus of the atom, we see an electrical storm, electrons flashing like lightning in what's called an electron cloud. It's the electrons harvested from this cloud that power up the nucleus. The forces are not fundamental at all. They are all caused by flows of clear energy. Let's slow this down and see what's going on here. Neutrons are decaying into protons. Protons absorb the ejected electrons and become neutrons, which creates a chain reaction that forms a circuit. That's what holds the nucleus together. It's like an electrical lock. There are no magical forces involved, none. Let's take a look at something larger. 
say, the Earth. It's only around really big things that we can see the effects of gravity. So if gravity is only observable around large things, and large things are made up of large accumulations of atoms, then the behavior of the large things should be equal to the cumulative behavior of all the atoms that make it up, right? Since the Earth is made up of lots and lots of atoms, and each atom is attracting clear energy, then the Earth as a unit should reflect the total amount of energy appetite of all its atoms. As the clear energy converges on the Earth at somewhere above the Earth's surface, the energy flow reaches a point of beginning to interact with matter. We experience this interaction as gravity. Clear energy approaching the Earth passes right through all objects, including each one of us. It is the drag of this clear energy flow on our bodies that results in what we experience as gravity. So gravity is not another magical fundamental force. It's the result of flowing clear energy. Funny, humans naturally think of things as solid. The fact is, they aren't solid at all. We are all energy fields, 99.999%. Put out your hands. Like this, come on. That feeling. The weight of drag, it's the same effect of sticking your hand in a flow of stream or, or out the car window. What about this simple reframe that brings me so much joy? It's just this, the glimpse of something obvious that soon everyone else will see. The biggest cop out in science is its love affair with fundamental forces. Gravity is not another magical force without explanation. Neither is electromagnetism, the weak force or the strong. These forces are simply flows of energy that can be traced down to the needs of the atom. No fundamental forces necessary, ever. One more thing. Nature has a way of repeating patterns. As the moon is trapped in the Earth's energy system, the Earth is trapped in the energy system of the sun. The clear energy converging on the sun condenses as it meets the sun's atmosphere called the chromosphere. Where the atom has an electron cloud, where clear energy starts to condense, the sun has a plasma layer. As the clear energy condenses in the sun's plasma layer, it causes monstrous electrical activity. Some of this energy will continue towards the body of the sun to feed the sun's atoms, and the rest radiates back out into space as light. One more, one more thing. All I'm suggesting here is that we add energy properties to empty space and explain these forces as flows of clear energy. With that simple fix, we can have a unified theory at last. I understand the impact of this on the science industrial complex. It will be epic. There will be squawking. Some scary shit will go down. But friends, we do not have another century to wander on a path of meager progress here. The best arguments in the world do not change a person's mind. The only thing that can do that is a good story, and it begins with a unified theory. And such a theory can lead to a myriad of likely wonders possible, such as deep space travel, anti-gravity, solutions to climate change, inexhaustible clean energy, and more. These are all given. But why else should we care? because it might unlock the secrets of the cosmos. That's the prize. That's what I mean when I say that there's a new paradigm at hand. And after all, that is why we do science. For many, it will always be safer and more profitable to retreat back to the past, but the old epoch is now being challenged. Are you with me? Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more from Pre Edwards, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button to be notified of new videos. We are available on all major platforms. Links are in the description. We hope to see you again soon. Check out our website at www.beyondeinstein.org to get the latest updates on our work, blogs, events, books, and more. You won't want to miss out. Pre-orders for Cree's latest book, When the Universe Goes Dark, will be available soon on our website. We guarantee you will be blown away. Until then, all the best to you.